What's up, guys? It's Ryder here. How has your day been? How is it going? And, uh, yeah, I mean, let's just cut to the chase. Marvel Phase 4 slate. It all just happened. Like, it, it all just happened. By the way, welcome to another episode of Podcast Style. This is a long-form content. We are going to be breaking down, I'm going to be breaking down, Basically everything we just learned from Marvel. All right, and it, it's a very exciting time. I am, I, I, I'm. This is this is a very, very raw reaction. I usually don't do this for for videos for content, but um, this is a special occasion. This is, uh, you know, we haven't gotten a slate announcement for. It's been like five years. I think Marvel did some. They did their big event for Phase Three back uh, October 2014. So, um, yes, though this is Comic Con. This is the the big main event that we've all been waiting for. And uh, I'm really, if you can't tell, I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I'm super, super excited to talk about this. So, uh, buckle up, strap in. And this might be a long, long uh, podcast conversation, but um, you know, uh, you guys feel free to kind of fast forward. Um, well, I mean, really, I'm going to be talking about everything that. Feige has just said. Okay, so uh, without any further ado, let it let let's let's get started. Um, so, and again, this is going to be pretty raw. I'm not going to do really any editing. So just kind of bear with me here. Okay, so. Um, the way it was revealed is very interesting. They started out with the Eternals, uh, and the Eternals. We we this is this is something we had all predicted, uh, but it was officially confirmed to be coming out November sixth of twenty twenty. Uh, and they they listed this uh, entire entire cast, uh, which was um, you know pretty extensive, kind of what we had uh, expected. The cast of the Eternals is going to be consisting of Angelina Jolie, Richard Madden, Kumali Nanjiani, Salma Hayek, Brian Tyree Henry, Lauren. Ridloff, Leah McHugh, and Don Lee. Now, here's where it gets weird. Uh, and this is kind of, we had uh, heard rumors, we had uh, expected Angelina Jolie to be playing Cersei, one of the, the main, very well known Eternals. But however, however, uh, it is being confirmed that Jolie is playing Thena. Uh, so that is a weird one. And I'll be real with you guys, I don't, I'm not familiar with Thena. I'm, I'm very familiar, well, no, I shouldn't say very, I'm relatively familiar with some of the more well known Eternals, uh, just because they tend to appear more in some of the, the more marvel comics um but i will confess to not knowing a lot about the eternals which is pretty exciting for me as a pretty hardcore marvel fan um but we are going to have are having sama hayek which i'm super excited that she's in this i would love her uh she's playing ajax a a, a, um, a relatively uh more well-known eternal although i believe they're gender bending this character don lee will be playing gilgamesh uh, which is another one of the the relatively um, more well known Eternals that we've known about for some time, and McHugh is playing Sprite, the the younger uh, Eternal that we had also heard about. Uh, no Millie Bobby Brown though, which is another another interesting uh, little touch. Nanjiani is playing Kingo, uh, again not too familiar with Kingo, and Henry is playing Fastos. Uh, Ridloff is playing Macri, and the best one, and for me, this is the one I'm most excited about, just because I actually know this character, Richard Madden, who I love, he is playing Icarus. I'm so excited for him, specifically because I know Icarus, and uh, Richard Madden is just some perfect casting in my opinion, so a really exciting, uh, really excited about all of that. But then right after that, they went ahead and they announced more details about Falcon and Winter Soldier. And this is really exciting. It is coming out fall of 2020. And uh, this is supposedly, we, we had, had heard that this was going to be mostly about Falcon becoming Captain America. However, the way it was presented and the way Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Sam were acting on stage, uh, it, it appears that both Winter Soldier and Falcon will become the new iteration of Captain America, both of them, which is really exciting and I think is going to appease some fans that were maybe a little bit upset that Winter Soldier didn't get some of that Captain America uh, mantle recognition. However, I think they're both going to be great, and however they choose to do it, I think it's going to be really exciting and really great. That is supposed to be coming out again fall 2020, and they've also confirmed that Daniel Brew will be reprising his role of Baron Helmet Zemo. Yes, good old Baron Zemo, and yes, indeed, he will have his helmet. He will have his mask, his purple, pink, you know, with some ac accents of gold mask, and I could not be more excited about that. And that 
that is really fun. It's going to be coming out again. Uh, I, I, I've heard kind of rumors that it'd be more late summer, but they're saying fall. So we'll stick with fall. Um, and then just, you know, just so we can kind of get wrap, wrap up 2020, because I really want to talk about 2021. Black Widow, uh, we, another one that we had heard about, rumored for next May. It's been officially confirmed to come out May 1st of 2020. Black Widow. This film will take place in between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. And I, I don't know exactly what capacity, how it's going to work out, uh, what the time frame will be, but it's going to supposedly take place a lot in Budapest. I, I expect it to, you know, kind of be moving around globally, but specifically, we, we've heard Budapest. Um, Florence Pugh has been confirmed as Yelena Belova, and is supposed to be some sort of uh, more like sister-like figure slash enemy kind of, you know, anti-hero, maybe Loki-ish role to Natasha, and that's going to be really fun. I suspect that she will take on the mantle of Black Widow going forward in the MCU after this movie. David Harbour was said to be playing a character known as Alexi, and yes, make all the Stranger Thing jokes that you want, um, but I think, I still am standing by the fact, I know, and I'm, I will be happy to be wrong, I will be the first in line to admit that I'm wrong, but I still have a feeling that he is playing a version of Ursa Major, uh, a, the classic Winter Guard character, which is basically a version of Beast, kind of Hulk, kind of character that transforms, you know, goes in between from a man to a grizzly bear. And uh, he's an awesome character. He's an alcoholic. Um, not not that that's, you know, awesome. But um, it's just kind of a fun, you know, visual thing. You know, a, a grizzly bear kind of man that's a mutant type thing that also, you know, is an alcoholic. It's kind of funny, uh, even though alcoholism is not a funny thing, and I'm not condoning that. Do not do not take that out of context. But, um, you know, we'll see who he plays. He he looks like, you know, his beard you see that he's grown out looks like he, he's, you know, gearing up for some good old Ursa Major. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see. It was also confirmed that Taskmaster will be the main villain of this movie, which uh, we had heard was rumored. And I believe O.T. Fag Benel will be playing that character of Taskmaster. Master. I'm not sure what iteration of the t- the character they will be going with, either the older, more classic version or the newer one. Um, there's been multiple versions, so we'll see how that works out. Rachel Weisz was also confirmed for the cast of Black Widow, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if they confirmed who she is playing. But um, that's 2020, and that sounds awesome to me, and I'm super excited, and I and I mean that wholeheartedly. I cannot wait for Black Widow. Falcon and Winter Soldier, is, that that sounds like it's going to be awesome. It's going to be on Disney+. Plus. That's really exciting. Uh, and then, of course, The Eternals, which, you know, is a super exciting film that I think is really going to get slept on just because of this 2021. And that's what we're about to talk about right now. So um, let me know thoughts, you know, uh, theories, questions, all of that in the comments about 2020. Uh, did I miss anything? I'm sure I did. I'm on kind of information overload right now. Like I said, kind of uncut, kind of raw. There's probably a little editing. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of losing my mind right now because these announcements are so awesome. Okay, let's dive into 2021, which um, I'm just going to say this right now, guys. I was just, From one MCU fan to another, this is probably going to be our year. This is going to be our This is going to be our year. And you're like, well, wait, no. The 2019 is our year. We got Endgame. We got Captain Marvel. We got Far From Home. We got all these things. No, man. 2021. This is the year. And, and, and if there's anything, if you, I mean, we all have lots of fun stuff going on in our lives, aside from Marvel, I, I hope, right? Um, but if you don't, for whatever reason, you, you're, you're not having a, 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 you know, a lot of great things happening in your life right now, don't worry. Do not worry. Look ahead to 2021. This is golden. Let's get into it. Starting off with February 2021, whew, Shang-Chi. And not just Shang-Chi. It's not just the first ever Shang-Chi film live action. No. No, it's not. It is It is called Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh. Yes, your mind's blown. My mind's blown. They are bringing the Mandarin back. Mandarin and the Ten Rings. If that sounds familiar, Ten Rings... Classic Iron Man villains. The ten, ten Rings have been a part of the MCU for the longest period of time. And Kevin Feige himself, he referenced the All Hail the King short. If you haven't seen it, please go on YouTube. It's on YouTube when you're finished watching this video, of course. And go on YouTube and search uh, search it up. It is the real Mandarin recruiting Trevor Slattery, the, the Ben Kingsley character from Iron Man 3, to work for the real Mandarin. We are seeing the real Mandarin. They cast the real Mandarin. Tony Leong, I may have, I'm sure I butchered his name, uh, uh, the very well-known Chinese actor will be portraying the Mandarin, and we will be having Simi Liu 
Liu, I, I want to say. I, I'm Again, I'm really, I apologize uh, for butchering the names of these actors. I'm not too familiar with the actors themselves, but um, these are, you know, Simi Liu, he's on the up and rise right now, and Tony Leung, uh, you know, again, from what, I've, from what I hear, very famous Chinese actor. You know, the Marvel Studios, they know what they're doing. Their, their casting is some of their best ever that is probably one of their their you know they have, marvel studios has a lot of strengths i'm not gonna lie <laughs> they, they have a lot of strengths that you know my opinion um but i'd say casting is, is easily one of those those top those top things so uh yeah um you know i've got a lot of faith aquafina has also joined the cast i do not think that they have um disclosed a role for her yet but you know she's a very funny actress and she also can bring a lot of dramatic beats good action beats uh she's really great in crazy rich asians she was really good in oceans eight she check her out in that uh and um i'm really excited for our shang chi i'm so glad we got an actor i can't believe the mandarin is in this now uh with shang chi his villain is his father uh fu manchu and fu manchu is basically like the uh, the the asian version of the kingpin in 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 the in the you know equivalent in in the mcu and I'm, I'm wondering if Fu Manchu will be kind of combined into the Mandarin character and we will see, you know, the Mandarin actually be Shang-Chi's dad. We will see how it goes, but um, they're going to retroactively make Iron Man 3 better by using the Mandarin here. It's all going to be great. I am so excited for Shang-Chi. It's going to be this Kung Fu masterpiece of, of an action film. Um, it's going to break box office records. Hopefully it is, you know, of such high caliber, aside from the action, just a high caliber story. Um, but truly, I am so, so, so excited for this. And, um, you know, I can't wait to talk to you guys more about this film in upcoming videos. Moving on to spring 2021, WandaVision. Now, this is interesting because I know some of you guys, I didn't really talk about this yet, but, you know, they only announced five movies and they announced five TV series going on Disney+. Plus. These these TV series are going to be super in interconnected with the films, and we'll touch on that in a little bit. But WandaVision, uh, they're bringing back Elizabeth Olsen. They're bringing back Vision, of course, and I, we don't know when this, what time period this is going to take place, and we don't know how it's going to work. They did not, you know, really reveal a lot of anything uh, other than the fact it's going to be a lot of fun. They revealed a really cool logo that kind of has a '50s kind of look to it. Um, and then, you know, Elizabeth Olsen herself said that, you know, she's looking, she said this like almost, you know, obviously I'm not quoting her, but it was along the lines of, you know, where I'm really excited to watch and see Wanda fully become Scarlet Witch. And that is really cool to me that they're finally referencing Scarlet Witch. Hopefully she'll get her headpiece. Um, and, and I'm really excited for everything. I love Wanda. I love Vision. And I can't wait to see their re relationship blossom in all these r wonderful, mystical, weird ways. Um, also coming in spring of 2020. 21, which this is nuts that we're getting two things so close together but uh loki is going to be coming out spring 2021 and it is going to be following uh that that 2012 avengers loki that escaped with the tesseract and supposedly he'll be meddling with throughout time and throughout space and all these different uh you know very crucial events in american and worldwide global history so um i'm really looking forward to that i i'm you know tom hillson's excited i'm excited uh, more Loki all day long. That's going to be great. And I just want to clarify that he is not going to be alive in current day. This is going to be off in one of those time splinters from Endgame. Okay, here's where we get to the big meat and potatoes. This is one of the this this and Shang Chi man. My God, let's let's talk about this second Doctor Strange film. Oh yeah, baby, May 2021. Now I just want to reiterate, this is coming out in May. Okay, that that means that Loki and WandaVision are somehow coming out in between February and May, so month two of the year and month five. We are we're we I mean this is nuts. We're going to be getting you know Shang Chi in February, WandaVision in March, Loki in April, and then Doctor Strange two in uh in in, in May. I mean I'm I'm just blown away by this. That is that that I that's a third of the year, a third of the year new MCU content, and I haven't even talked about everything yet. Twenty twenty one is going to be the year of Marvel. I am so excited about it. I'm so, I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm just I can't. I'm trying to express my enthusiasm, my excitement. This is gonna be that's gonna be a great year. It's got to be. All right, let's talk about Doctor Strange two, and uh, it's actually being called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. 
Holy shit. This is supposed to be Marvel's first actual scary movie. Scott Derrickson, the legend, the legend himself, he is returning to direct this film. And um, I just gotta, I just gotta give a lot of shout outs to this man. Uh, he's he's gone through some tough tragedies. Uh, Scott Derrickson, I, I'm, I'm talking about right now. I think his house burned down in those terrible California fires last year. And um, this man, he he he's persevering, man. He's he's he, you know visionary director, in my opinion. I think some of the the stuff in Doctor Strange two. And, and I'm sorry, excuse me. First Doctor Strange. We'll get to Doctor Strange two in a minute. But the, those some of those visual sequences in in a lot of them in Doctor Strange. I I you know hats off. I it's so great. So now that you know Marvel's fully going off the rails creatively, and and I mean that in all the great the best ways possible. You know that they're the hinges are off, the training wheels are off. You know I can't wait. To to see what this man does with whatever kind of sequences go on in Doctor Strange uh, in the in the multiverse of madness. Now, this film is going to take place and kind of, you know, uh, I guess I, I shouldn't say tie up the loose ends, although I will. But it's going to kind of carry on from things that have happened and will happen in the WandaVision series. And that is this is where it gets even more exciting. Scarlet Witch Elizabeth Olsen. Wanda Maximoff will be in Doctor Strange uh, in the Multiverse of Madness. I know. it is that That is madness. We will be seeing Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange team up, and they will be fighting Nightmare, uh, supposedly, from what we're hearing. And that is amazing. So it's going to be kind of scary, kind of horror. But don't worry if, you're a, if you are a parent listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't want to take my child to see a horror film. Don't worry. It's still a Marvel movie. It's going to might be a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more scarier than, you know, your, your Ant-Man and the Wasp. But I'm, it's, it's being released by Disney. It's going to be rated PG-13. I'm nearly 100% sure. Uh, it's Doctor Strange. It's it's Scarlet Witch. It's going to be great. So um, I wouldn't, if you don't like horror films or if you're a kid or if you're a parent, again, I wouldn't be spooked by that. All right. No pun intended. I, I would not because it's it's still, it might just be a little bit different, but it's still going to be Marvel. So I think you got to keep that in mind. So super cool. Um, and I love that that's going to be super tied to WandaVision. And I'm, I'm, they really didn't reveal anything about WandaVision. And, um, you know, plot wise, they didn't really reveal anything about Doctor Strange in the multiverse madness. But again, I think we're, I'm missing a key word here, multiverse. And I'm, you know, they gave Doctor Strange 2 this May release date. I am wondering if that they, if they did this because they're going to kind of backdoor introduce X-Men and Fantastic Four, which again, we will talk about those announcements in a little bit. Um, but I wonder if they're going to kind of tease that here. I don't know the plot i'm wondering if you know in wandavision scarlet witch she kind of enacts a the mcu version of house of m which kind of brings mutants in and maybe in which case dr strange has to travel the multiverse to try i don't know i i can't even i, I can't even be, begin to hypothesize about these things uh, but believe me i will so be subscribed to get my you know dr strange videos uh which will be coming soon um, I'm, I'm talking a mile a minute right now but um I, we got to get to all this other stuff uh, and yeah, let's dive into Marvel. What if, so that is coming to uh, summer 2021. So that, I mean, nearly months after this, this amazing Shang-Chi, WandaVision, Loki and Dr. Strange sandwich that we get, we will be getting what if, um, and this is going to be a, the MCU's first Canon Marvel series. It, it's, it's their first animated MCU Marvel Canon series. I don't know if I said that the first time I probably didn't. I I'm going in multiple directions, but it, MCU animated series Canon. Okay. Now let's talk about this. Jeffrey Wright, the, the legendary actor himself. I love him on Westworld. I love him in general. He has such a nuance to him, and his voice is, is just a, it's just a, a, a symphony of jazz, man. Like, we, you got, yeah, if you've heard him talk, if you watch Westworld, symphony of jazz. I, I hope that makes sense. But uh, he will be voicing, get ready for it, the Watcher. And I, I suspect this will be Uatu, the Watcher, that version of the character, and he will narrate the entire What If series as the Watcher. And we will be seeing, uh, you know, various things. They release this entire cast, and it's basically most of everybody from the MCU that you know and love to the, up until this point. And I'm sure that, that that cast will only grow larger and larger as uh, as it goes on further, you know, as the series goes on longer and longer. Uh, but I believe the first episode will be uh, centered around Peggy Carter becoming Captain America. So you've got a lot of those first Avenger Captain America characters coming back, uh, voice actors. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But Jeffrey Wright as the Watcher, MCU Watcher, Uatu, super cool stuff. Really excited for that. And that is coming summer 2021. Now let's talk about fall 2021. Woo! I know, right? A lot of 2021 content. Hawkeye. Oh yeah, baby. 
based on supposedly, from what I would assume, the Matt Fraction run of the Hawkeye comic. Uh, and this is going to, it's been confirmed, Kate Bishop is going to be introduced here. Mr. Jeremy Renner himself will be returning as Clint Barton Hawkeye and or Ronan. We'll see how that goes. I don't know the time frame on this, and I don't know what version of Kate Bishop. If they're going to go the classic Kate Bishop, or they're going to make Hawkeye's daughter Kate Bishop. Who knows? It, it's very... Again, very up in the air, but um, it, it, that is coming fall 2021. They, I don't really think there's any other details other than the fact that it's most likely going to be based off the Matt Fraction run, and um, I couldn't be more excited. I, I mean, this is great stuff. So, uh, yeah, super awesome. But if that wasn't enough, um, and believe me, that's enough. If I'm being realistic, I'm like, that. if you give me that in one given year, I will be happy and satisfied with the, the biggest smile on my face, the biggest. Yeah, I, but no. Mr. Mr. Taika Watiti, Mr. Taika Watiti, he's got something else for us. Coming November 2021, merely months after Hawkeye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting Thor 4, and this is being called Thor Love and Thunder. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't think I've been more excited for anything. I just rewatched Ragnarok the other night and I love it. It is so great. Everything Taika does, it's just amazing. And uh, Thor Love and Thunder, it is, uh, it's going to be doing something, you know, you, you could have just said Thor 4 and I would have been happy, but they're doing, they're going the extra mile. Taika is, 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 how do I say this? I don't know. I guess I got to just come out and say it. We're getting female Thor. We are getting Jane Foster Thor. We're getting Natalie Portman Thor. We are getting whew, the mighty Thor. We are getting Jason Aaron's Thor on, on the big screen. Uh, and I, I'm losing my mind. I'm, I'm losing my mind. Um, I know some of you are maybe in the comments or maybe re hear me right now and you're like, damn, you know, I don't really like Natalie Portman. I don't really like Natalie Portman as Jane Foster. Um, and I don't want to go back to Thor the Dark World. I don't want to go back to Thor 1. And I feel you. I'll be honest. I'm right with you. I'm, I'm not a big fan. I haven't been a big fan of Jane Foster Thor. However, I'm a massive fan of Jason Aaron and Jason Aaron's Thor run and his run with female Thor and everything that they he did with Jane Foster, um, her cancer storyline. It, it, it is... It's deep. It's connective. It is. It is. It is amazing. It is so great. And I don't know, you know, exactly what they're gonna do with that because Tyke is only, you know, he's just basing. He's taking. He's pulling. Pulling some ideas from that. Um, I, I, I just can't believe that they're doing it. I can't believe Feige and Marvel have the balls to do this. I can't believe Natalie Portman's coming back. But not just that. No, Tessa Thompson will be the king of, uh, of New Asgard as Valkyrie. And they're confirming she is going to be LGBT. We don't know, you know what capacity for bisexual. I, I see... Some of you guys, you know, I, I know there's, there is a level of homophobia in general. Um, and just kind of widespread. Look, you don't... I, if if you are you know have even a, a slight amount of homophobia, I, I don't like I don't know I, I I don't know I don't even know what to, what I want to say here, but I just don't be negative about this because you even you, even if you have a slight amount of homophobia, it just it doesn't make sense to me. Um, I don't I don't understand homophobia. I don't I don't know I don't understand any of it. But if that is if that if you if that is you if I'm if I'm saying something that you know if you're uncomfortable with the fact that Valkyrie will be LGBT. And the fact that that might be a big storyline in this movie, I just don't like. Don't be upset about that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to. It, there's there's not a lot of ways for me to communicate to you. I, I can tell because you've got a lot of walls up about. Um, and I'm you know I'm talking to a very specific group here uh, of people. You know the, you've got a lot of walls up about you know LGBT stuff. It just you know I don't know. I don't know what I'm really trying to say here, but I, I would just just I don't know. I I think this is Marvel's. I hopefully this is Marvel this is Marvel going to successfully be you know getting some really good LGBTQ representation out into the public in a really you know strong respectful way that um you know kind of destigmatizes it a little bit and I I think that is what is going to happen uh, Valkyrie is such a lovable character and um you know, it, homo I don't really want to talk much about it, but I know it exists, and I know it exists in the fandom. So uh, let's just be respectful in the comments. I, I guess I can ask that. But, um, you know, you're free, you're free to have your opinion, man. I, I mean, I'm we're all just Marvel fans. You're free to have your opinion. But, um, you know, again, I don't want to focus too much on that. Um, however, I, I'm, you know, Tess Thompson herself said that she is expecting and she wants Valkyrie to have a queen. and Or something, something along the lines of that, all right? 
So uh, now I'm thinking, holy shit, could we see Natalie Portman, female Thor, get together, hook up with Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson? I'm thinking that's hot as shit. And that's also going to be awesome as shit. And yes, I'd love to see that. And now we're thinking we've got those two amazing things happening in Thor Love and Thunder. What the hell's going on with our main Thor, Thor Odin's son, Chris Hemsworth? He's back, bro. He's back, man. I'm so pumped. And I don't know what he's doing. I hope he's doing something cool with Beta Ray Bill. They didn't talk about him at all. But um, I'm sure I'm, I'm, they must be doing some version of the Unworthy Thor storyline. I, I don't know. I feel like they kind of did that in Thor Ragnarok, but I don't know. It's going to be super metal, super rock and roll. Have you seen this logo? I love this logo more than everything. Uh, I am so excited for this. I'm so excited for Doctor Strange uh, in, in the Multiverse of Madness. And I'm so excited for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I am just in awe in utter shock, disbelief that these films... On top of on top of all the amazing Disney Plus series are all coming out in 2021. I'm just I'm blown away, blown to oblivion. And if you're like, wow, 2021, that's so far away. No, it's not. It's two years, bro. It's two freaking years away. That's nothing. That's no time at all. It's not. It's not because two years ago, you know, we had Spider-Man: Homecoming and and Thor: Ragnarok, and it, it's just it blows me away how soon this is all coming. Um, but you know, believe it or not, I haven't even talked about everything. I know, I know, it's nuts. It is nuts. So you know, Marvel, they are ready to wrap up their panel. They're taking their big group photos, and uh, you know, whatever. Feige's having a great time. He's having a ball. Out of nowhere, like my uh, you know, Mahershala Ali walks out onto stage. Yeah, and we're like, hey, what's Mahershala Ali doing here, right? Uh, everyone's got their cool Black Widow caps on. Everyone's super pumped for Black Widow. Mahershala's brought his own cap. What is his cap? Um, eh, what what could he? Uh, okay, Mahershala brought a hat that says mm, the word Blade on it. Because yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mahershala Ali is the MCU's Blade. And he's getting, supposedly, from what we understand, he's getting his own MCU movie, Blade. Yes, I, I know. I, I, don't, I almost feel like what I'm saying isn't real, but it is. It is real. Mahershala Ali is one of the best actors working, period, today. He is, he, I, I don't have words to describe how much of a fan I am of him. Um, he was great in Luke Cage, uh, but I think we're, we're moving past Netflix. We're moving on to Blade. And I don't know what this is going to be, I, but Blade is vampires. Blade is Dracula. Blade, I mean, I mean, he isn't actually Dracula, but you know what I'm saying. Blade, Blade brings this whole, whole, you know, mythical darkness that may be introduced in Doctor Strange 2, but it's this whole weird side of the MCU and just Marvel in general that we have not explored. Monsters. We haven't explored this, and I'm, I can't believe that they're doing it. I, I'm wondering if this is going to be their first ever Marvel-rated R movie. I don't know if it's going to be... They didn't really give many details on it. I assume it's a movie and not it's not a Disney Plus series. I, you know, it could, I've heard people say maybe it's on Hulu. Hey, maybe it is. I, I don't know. We, we really don't know, but Mahershala Ali is Blade every day of the week, baby. Yes, I am so happy about that. Um, and then other news... Mr. Feige, Mr. The, you know, the man, Kevin Feige, has said that they have Fantastic Four movie in development. They have mutants in development, movies with mutants in development. They have Black Panther 2 in development. They have Captain Marvel 2 in development. They have Guardians of the Galaxy 3 in development. Um, but, of course, Fantastic Four is huge. Just hearing those words come out of Feige's mouth is huge. Now, I don't, I'm wondering if we're going to be getting um, any kind of announcement like this, maybe uh, like further announcements of Black Panther 2, Fantastic Four, something with mutants at D23. I'd probably say no, but you know, I believe Marvel is going to have a presence there. So um, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, maybe we'll be getting some more details on the Disney Plus series there, but um, this is this is a Hall H panel for for the ages. I am I'm in shock. I'm I need to process this. Um, you know, I, before I recorded this, I was, I was freaking out with, you know, people I was, I was, I wasn't, I obviously wasn't fortunate enough to actually be at Hall H, but I was, you know, staying, you know, up to date on the Twitter and, and, and on, on the Twitter, on Twitter, uh, on the Marvel trending pages, following Jeremy Conrad, you know, you know, uh, Ryan Panagos, like all the people who are live tweeting this, this event, 
Uh, and th- believe me, this is an event. They took over Twitter. Marvel took over Twitter. It's trending. It's huge. Uh, if I had to pick a film that I am most excited for, I'd have to say Thor Love and Thunder, just because I love that Jason Aaron runs so much, and I love Taika Waititi so much, and I love Thor Ragnarok so much, and I love Thor in general so much. I think Thor is probably my favorite MCU character right now, and I'm talking like post-Ragnarok Thor. So, um, you know, I'm super excited for that. Uh, I'm also really excited for Black Widow. I think that's going to be really fun, and um, don't sleep on the Eternals. I know there's a lot of other stuff to be excited about, but the Eternals, I think it's going to be something really special, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, uh, as well as Shang-Chi. My God, Shang-Chi. I'm hoping Donnie Yen is in this movie in some capacity, but this film is, yes, you know, the Mandarin is cool and all that, but do not, again, don't sleep on the Shang-Chi character himself. This man is truly the master of Kung Fu, and uh, I think we're going to see some incredible visuals in this movie. I mean, I, I don't even know. I I, th- I would say Doctor Strange. Or, or, I'm sorry. I th- I'd say Thor is probably my, my most anticipated, but Doctor Strange is a close second. I love Scarlet Witch. Is, that Scarlet Witch is going to be in there. Um, but also, just keep in mind, this is only 2020 and 2021. If there's a film that wasn't announced, like Black Panther 2, that you're kind of upset about, don't worry. Don't fret. That is definitely coming in 2022 or 2023. Um, but yeah, hey, if you had a good time listening to this, hanging out, kind of breaking this down, make sure you subscribed, uh, and I will be doing a lot more videos for kind of covering this regarding this i've got some other comic-con coverage i want to get out uh, some dc stuff so make sure you, you are subscribed to get all of that thanks so much for watching uh, and i'm Ryder signing off with infinite attitude and goodbye